everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the 200th episode of Die Pot Weekly. I cannot believe that we're here, and I have a really, really fun yarn dyeing project for you today. A long time ago, before I even started Die Pot Weekly, I decided to play with Rainbow Kool Aid to create a self striping colorway. I used a handmade blank, painted on the rainbow colors, and then, well, we created this. It really is more of a gradient colorway. If I say self striping, I typically think about colors that change and repeat in some kind of way. Whereas something that's a gradient or asymmetric might only have one uh, repeat of each of the colors. It's a small distinction, but one that I make now. So today, we're gonna make a self-striping colorway using Rainbow Kool-Aid and a really, really, really long skein of yarn, a six meter skein, in fact. To dye yarn with food coloring or Kool-Aid, you really need four main components. You need the artificial food coloring. You'll see something like red number three, blue number one on the label of the food coloring you're using. You need to have a protein-based yarn, usually wool, but alpaca, silk, mohair, other animal fibers work great. You can use blends. I started out dyeing a 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarn, but food coloring won't work on cotton, other cellulose fibers, or synthetics. You will need acid, which is most commonly used in the form of vinegar or citric acid. And in Kool-Aid packets, the citric acid's in there already. And finally, you need heat. And today we will be using a microwave to steam set our colorway. One of the best things about dyeing yarn with food coloring or Kool-Aid is that it is kitchen safe. So I am personally comfortable using my cooking pots and pans. And my kids even like to join in on the fun sometimes. In the original video, I think I used a total of six packets representing our rainbow of colors. I have honestly not yet decided if I'm gonna stick with one of each or if I'm gonna to wanna to pump up the volume of the color, but that's something that we can decide as we start dyeing our yarn. The flavors that I am gonna play with today are cherry, orange, lemonade, green apple, blue raspberry lemonade, and grape. The biggest perk of the Kool-Aid packets is that they have the citric acid in them. So therefore, there is no need to add any acid to our pre-soak. The acid will be in with the dye. So as we paint these colors onto the yarn, that's all the acid that we need. To create our self-striping yarn, we need a super, super long skein. I am gonna be using one of Wool to Dye For's Platinum Sock six meter skeins, which comes already wound into a huge skein. For reference, regular skeins are usually between one and two yards. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Don't worry, you do not have to buy a really long skein to do this technique. You can wind your own really long skein using a huge PVC pipe dinny nani walking around a couple chairs, or even using a warping board. I will link to my self-striping playlist in the video description so you can see a variety of ways I prepare the fiber so we can get a super long skein for a really long colorway. Normally, when I'm doing a hand-painted colorway on the countertop, I would add acid to the pre-soak. But, as I said, since we're using Kool-Aid, we do not need to add any acid in here. You are more than welcome to, but it definitely is not necessary. Um, so, I am going to pre-soak our 100 grams of yarn in some plain tap water for 20 to 30 minutes. This pre-soak will allow the fibers to get really saturated, which will make it easier for us to apply the colors to the yarn. I added one third of a cup of water to six uh, plastic cups, and now I'm going to add and dissolve the Kool-Aid in these. We want to use a small volume of water here because we want the colors to be uh, a little more concentrated. There is a limit of how much water volume you can add to a skein when you're hand paint painting it. Because at some point, if you add too much liquid, then the skein's gonna start dripping. So that's why we are starting with this volume. We could potentially go even smaller, uh, but I think around two cups is about 
the limit of what I have been able to add to hand painted yarn. And now we just have to stir up each of the colors to dissolve the powder. And I will wipe the spoon off in between switching different colors. I did start with the yellow because that is the most pastel and it doesn't take a lot for the yellow to shift orange or green. For the dye application, we are going to use some foam brushes. I really like this as a way to apply color without adding too much liquid to yarn. You can also pour and things like that. But these particular brushes I'm using today are ones that I just use with food coloring. I gently squeezed out as much of the water as I could from the yarn so that way it is damp and definitely not dripping. The more water you can remove from your yarn, the more liquid we can add back in in the form of our dye. I have laid this out so that way if the skein starts here, we go back and forth and back and forth and back and then around back to the beginning. Uh, this is going to make it a little easier for me to deal with the color progressions as we create our rainbow. My work surface is protected with one layer of some plastic wrap so that way I can wrap up the yarn in the end to keep the colors separate from one another so we can steam set the yarn. And in fact I'm sort of pushing things down so I can focus on one color at a time. I do want to do a quick little swatch test to see if I want to add any more pigmentation to any of the colors. So I'm just dipping my brush in and checking our red, our orange, yellow. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to add another, at least one other packet to the yellow green, blue, and finally purple, which is definitely got a grayish hue to it, but that's the reality of our purple. So I definitely want to add one more packet of lemonade uh, so that way we can intensify that yellow color. Otherwise, I'm planning on leaving the rest of these colors as they are. Coming in with our updated yellow color, it is still very, very pastel, but there is a tiny bit more punch to it. Now that the colors are final, we can get to applying the color in earnest. I am dipping the phone brush in the dye and then applying that to the yarn. There will be sort of like a tonal modeledness to the colorway and that is perfectly fine. I am taking extra care as I go down to do at least um, some layer of color across the whole thing. Um, we will be checking for color penetration and looking at the other side momentarily. But I think that separating uh, the yarn out in this way is going to be really, really helpful today uh, because I can sort of wrap up the yarn as we go with the plastic wrap to minimize uh, oopses. <laughs> as best I can at least. You can take this to another level and create tertiary colors to go in between. Uh, there is just a lot that you can do with this. Okay, so that is our first layer of red. We still have plenty of dye. Uh, you could definitely wear gloves for this if you don't want to stain your fingers. And now we are just going to flip this section over. Uh, doing this will introduce some twist into the yarn that's sort of a little bit of a reality but it shouldn't cause a problem. But you can see that the coverage is not perfect. Um, if we go into the sections with more coverage the dye has penetrated the whole skein but we have some areas here where we need more pigmentation and so that is where I'm going to focus with adding more color first. Uh, this will ensure that we get a good depth of shade throughout the whole project. But again, part of the tonal variation and things that we see is part of the character of this type of technique. 
and playing special attention. We'll do some like overlap probably in this area. Now uh, I'm going to go in and just use up the rest of this dye that I have mixed, but you can see that the amount is pretty close to perfect uh, with, you know, a little excess, but so I'm not worried about running out, but I think that the key is trying to do like some full coverage uh, right away uh, before we, uh, before you flip to the other side, that way you don't run out. One other note about the color is that things will always look deeper and darker while they are wet from when they are dry. So that is something to definitely keep in mind while you are working on this colorway. And now, goodness, I think I sort of want to do a little bit of wrapping as I go along. This won't give me the like perfect pretty skein all painted out, but you can see that I just sort of wrapped the yarn around through that plastic wrap uh, just so that way I've sort of protected it from adding another color on top. It's now looking very much like a Twizzler. This isn't always the way I do things, but I think that it is going to be handy today. Now that one color is finished, I went on and did the exact same thing for the other five colors, carefully adding a layer of the color to one side before flipping it over and trying to distribute the color where it is most needed on the other side. If you don't have a lot of Kool-Aid packets, but you want to pump up the volume of your color, you can add liquid drops to these mixtures. There is plenty of acid to set a lot of color here, so that is a technique that I like to do uh, to intensify the color because it can be cheaper to add some liquid food coloring drops than it can be to use four packets of Kool-Aid for each color. Keep in mind that we're using about one packet of Kool-Aid, except for the lemonade where we have two, per 16 to 17 grams of yarn. So if you want to achieve some of these colors on a full skein, then well, you would want to use six packets or with the yellow, 12 for 100 grams. With the yellow, I'm honestly a lot more nervous about the color, so I am coming and bringing its own sort of extra little wrap to put around it um, just for a little more protection and coverage, uh, just because yeah, it's the color that will show up uh, a stain the easiest. Since I was wrapping things as we went along, I shifted things down um, and added a little bit more plastic wrap to give me a little bit more space to use for the blue and purple. Finally, for the final color, I added as much grape as I could, covered it up, and then, well, the thing is already wrapped and we just have to steam set it. The painting is done, and I am going to finish wrapping things up. I don't think I've done something like this where I've wrapped as I've gone before, but I, I like it. Hopefully it'll help keep colors from spreading. There's always a risk when you are trying something for the first time. I have placed this jelly roll inside a microwave safe dish. I'm not going to cover it with something else because I don't want to squish it. I don't want to force any of that liquid out. But I'm now going to go microwave it on high for a total of four to six minutes using two minute increments. Four minutes was enough time to get this piping hot, but we have a little bit of a problem. There is some liquid that has come out. Hopefully it is just that purple spilling out and actually there's a tiny bit of pigment, not much compared to the depth of the purple over there. So fingers crossed, but I am doing my best to soak that up right now so that way it hopefully won't stain 
any of the other colors. This is why we try to wrap them up uh, separately as best we can. The reason why I recommend microwaving the yarn in increments is that the total amount of time could vary based on how much liquid you have in the yarn, how many grams of yarn you have, and the strength of your microwave. By using increments, we can make sure we don't overheat or dry out the yarn. So when I'm checking the yarn in between increments, I'm checking for, okay, are things still wet and how hot is it? Uh, and now we just need to let the yarn cool completely. But check that out. That is so cool looking. The reason why you want to let the yarn cool completely before you wash it is because you want to avoid any felting. We're dealing with a superwash yarn here today, but if it were non-superwash, adding super hot yarn to super cold water could shock the fibers a bit and result in some light felting. In general, I find that the risk of felting comes mostly at the washing stage anyway, but it's always good to try to keep, treat your fibers kindly. The yarn is now cool and we can open this up to wash it. In general, I try to avoid using plastic wrap as much as I can these days. Uh, and that's because I find that it's not necessary for a lot of dye projects. But for something like this where we don't want, say, the red to bleed into our yellow, it is handy to have something. And I haven't found a silicone wrap of some kind yet that would be big enough uh, for me to do something like this. In general, I do this kind of thing more with, say, sock blanks, which aren't quite as big, uh, but it worked perfectly, and I'm glad that that purple was on the bottom, because if we were gonna have something bleed out, it did not seem to go onto the other colors. Here we go. Now, I'm gonna wanna be really careful to not tangle this, but having these different color sections, it's actually really, really helpful. I'm now going to add one of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties to the yarn, just so that way I can help keep it a bit ordered and avoid tangling. Now, in addition to the food coloring and citric acid, there's flavor and other stuff we want to rinse out. So I'm going to use some clear dish soap. You might notice that the color is all in our yarn, which is great, but uh, the water does look a little bit cloudy, and that's some of all that other stuff rinsing out. You'll notice that the Kool-Aid packets, when we dissolve them, aren't very transparent or translucent. They're a little bit opaque. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, but nevertheless, you want to rinse it. Now, as for the smell, the, the yarn is definitely going to still smell like Kool-Aid, um, but you can rinse uh, that out, and over time I find that the smell goes away. So now I am going to rinse this yarn a couple more times, then I'm going to put it through my spin dryer to remove as much of the liquid as possible. But you can sort of wrap it up in a towel to gently uh, remove some water, or even put it through a salad spinner. And so I'll come back and we'll take a look at the dry colorway. Before we go take a look at the dry self-striping Kool-Aid rainbow, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all for helping me hit 200 episodes of the Dye Pot Weekly series. About two and a half years ago, I launched a Kickstarter with the goal of releasing one new video every week. And here we are with two videos a week and we're hitting the 200th episode. This is awesome. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I always release new episodes on Tuesday and Friday mornings. Tuesdays are always Dye Pot Weekly. Fridays are sometimes Dye Pot Weekly, sometimes a Leave No Dye Behind type video, and you really don't want to miss any of it. I truly love what I do, and my goal is to make yarn dyeing feel accessible and approachable, so that way you might want to give it a try. The Kickstarter is now over, but there are many ways that you could support the content you see here. I do have a Patreon and a shop. Uh, you can find links to both in the video description. But now, let's go take a closer look at this yarn. 
This worked so nicely. The yellow is still a little pale compared to the rest of the colors, but I am thrilled. We got fairly even color sections. The purple is definitely the longest, but yeah, I guess now the only question is, is there enough length to be a full stripe? And that I don't necessarily know, but you will definitely get micro stripes for sure when knitting with this kind of colorway. If you want to have longer stripes, you should start with a much, much bigger skein than six meters. Again, you don't need to purchase a really long skein. You can make a warping board or which is basically a frame with a lot of pegs that can help you wrap up something that's really big. You can set up two chairs across the house and walk around it to make a really long skein. There are many, many options. For your reference, each of these stripes dry is about 31 inches long. Some of them are a bit longer, but I think the shortest one is 31 inches. The other thing that is great is that we have almost no color transfer from stripe to stripe. Because we wrapped it up as we go along, we were able to protect all of them. And that leaking we saw uh, did not transfer and overtake the yellow. Thank goodness. Now I need to go wind this into something to make it more functional. Uh, it's really, really hard to knit directly from such a big skein. So I'm gonna go place it over two chairs and wind this onto a Nitty Knotty. This is one that I made out of PVC pipe. You can collapse it to an H. You can change the size of the center bar. I do have a video on all the materials that you need to make one of these and how to wind yarn onto it. I'll include those links in the video description. Now that I have rewound the self-striping yarn, it looks quite different. Balance wise, the colors that stand out to me are sort of orange and green when I stand away. The blue, yellow, a bit of the red and the purple sort of fade back. Something about this feels very vintage, very 70s to me when I see it like this. While there is a lot of balance with the amount of yarn of each color, the way that this looks and feels is really based on the uh, intensity and potency of some of the colors. And so those dominant feelings are sort of what are coming through. Now I want to go and make a swatch. Uh, I want to swatch this so that way we can get a sense about the approximate size of each of our stripes. The swatch that I make is not going to be a perfect representation of socks. I don't think that each color will be big enough for a stripe on a pair of socks, but we will see. Here is our swatch. And with about one meter a color, uh, we do get a full stripe, over a full stripe of each color. This is 40 stitches knit back and forth in stockinette on US size one 2.5 millimeter knitting needles. So again, this isn't the number of stitches you would have in a sock, but if you're doing a sock with 60 stitches, you might get a full stripe of each color, or at least pretty close. I had so much fun knitting this up and seeing the way the rainbow striped gradient is coming through. It does feel really vintage versus bright on the rainbow scale, sort of like we discussed previously, but oh, it's pretty. The video is where I'm most likely to do a swatch. Are these self-striping yarn videos? Because I think that it's hard to visualize how many stitches you could get from each of the stripes and the information is helpful for when it comes to you planning your own colorways. Unfortunately, even if I were to get a circular sock machine or something similar, I think it would still take me way too much time to make a swatch in every video. Um, but in my opinion, striping yarns are in a special category. And so that's why I do try to include these swatches at the end of the video. And it doesn't hurt that I do have to reskein the yarn. If you've been watching me for a while, you know how I feel. Uh, in general, I like to leave the yarn as it is dyed. I think that it's much easier to visualize what it might do with different knitting patterns that way. But, I mean, you can't really do that with a self striping yarn. That's not really fair. Uh, and, I mean, this is beautiful. Oh man, let's take a moment to appreciate what the reverse stockinette here looks like. 
That is so cool. I almost even like that better than the quote right side. I think that the way that the colors mix, it's really, really cool. What would you like to make with this yarn? Uh, please let me know down in the comment section. I need to do one final close up of this before I unravel it. I think that this is one of my favorite skeins of yarn I have ever dyed. Can you believe that we did this with Kool-Aid? I started my yarn dyeing journey over a decade ago, and Kool-Aid was the first food coloring that I used to dye yarn. And well, the rest is history, but it has been really, really fun lately to go back to my roots and pull out the Kool-Aid and create some beautiful, beautiful colorways, especially rainbows. I have always loved creating rainbows with Kool-Aid. In today's video, I set the color in a microwave, but if you don't have a microwave, you can still create a colorway like this. Use a steamer basket on your stovetop or even in a crock pot and steam set the yarn for 20 to 30 minutes and that will help you get a beautiful colorway like we created here. If you want to create something similar and don't have access to Kool-Aid but have food coloring, what I would recommend is adding a good splash of vinegar to your pre-soaking yarn. I prefer to add the vinegar to the yarn versus to the actual food coloring dyes. I would like to take this moment to thank all of you for your support in not just the Dye Pot Weekly series, but all of the content I've been producing here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I absolutely love dyeing yarn and sharing this passion with all of you. I kickstarted the Dye Pot Weekly series to give myself an excuse to play with commercial dyes and to learn and explore and try new techniques and different fiber contents. And that is something that we have done over these past 200 videos. But there's still so much more to explore, so many techniques I haven't tried yet, fiber contents I haven't dyed, and more. And so I really look forward to where the next 200 episodes will even bring us. If you have been a Chemnitz fan for a while, or maybe if you're a new fan and you want to find a way to help support all the content that I produce here, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a great platform that connects fans with the content creators they enjoy. In exchange, you get some really cool perks. I offer early access to a new video, some behind the sneak peeks, advanced notice of shop restocks, and more. You can find more information about the Patreon in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. I might be the one on camera for these videos, but all of you have been on this journey with me, and I am so thankful and grateful. If there's a video you really want to see, make sure you leave a comment below. I keep a running list of requests and suggestions and frequently draw from those as I start filming a new video. When I started Dye Pot Weekly, with the intent to go and explore commercial dyes, I also promised that I was not done with food coloring, and I'm still not done with food coloring. I think that it is a great way to play around with yarn dyeing and sort of test the waters to see if it's a hobby you really enjoy before getting dedicated dye equipment and tools so that way you can dive into commercial dyes. One big perk of this series is that I take risks so that way you don't have to. Some of the techniques and dye sources I try are a little more unconventional, but some of them have had some really incredible results. And so I like to give things a shot and try things out the first time on camera so that way you can learn along with me. And that way you know what you might want to try or maybe you might want to avoid. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to all of the beautiful colors that we will create together using so many techniques and having so much fun.